last year was a challenging year. We had significant policy shift that exacerbated an already uh, challenging financial system because of the prior year's uh, challenges with uh, three bank closures. So the system, the financial system, and the banking industry was already in a pretty tough environment. I think the big event for us was obviously the interest rate cap, which uh, challenged a lot of banks, especially banks that are dealing in the retail industry. For Citi, because of the nature of the clients that we deal with, remember we, deal, we are strictly a corporate and investment bank in this market. And our clients are the large local corporates, the governments, the financial institutions, and the multinationals who are already on very, very, um, I would call it tight kind of pricing. When we give clients like those loans, we were nowhere near, in fact, the benchmark minimum, the interest rate cap. Therefore, the cap did not have any effect on our lending practices, actually, because our clients were not you know, a higher risk profile. Uh, we were not in the consumer or retail industry that was more impacted by that. Uh, so it uh, fortunate for us, it was a it was a good year. I think other things that worked last year for us was that we were had already invested heavily into efficiency, which is what the interest rate cap is demanding of the banking industry. Because if you have in prior years made a lot of money from high margins, and those margins get shifted or or tightened, then you have to find other means and ways to build efficiency into your business. City already had a very, very efficient business, as you know from our ratios. We are highly digital. Uh, as, as mentioning to you just earlier that our manual processing in this bank is less than 0.0001% of our banking business. We are highly digital. We give our clients the capabilities to use digital systems. You know we have only two branches. We have only two branches in this country, but yet we are about 25% of the clearinghouse city. That's a lot of efficiency, a lot of digitization being pushed through. We, uh, so those are some of the things that really enabled our financial performance. We had built in the efficiencies over the years, and we had a client base that would not be impacted by things like interest rate capping, if I was to summarize it. Of course, uh, you mentioned the non-performing loans. That was also another good story. Uh, I think for the banking industry, non-performing loans has been a challenge, largely not just because um, of uh, perhaps the credit um, environment, but also because you know, the court systems have been very slow in building recoveries into the process. Uh, last year, we actually made some significant recoveries of you know yesteryear um, uh, yeah, bad yeah, loans. Yeah, court system. Uh, well, through the court system, yes. Through the court system and auctions and this and that and the other. So we finally managed to actually do quite a bit of cleanup for loans that had been had gone back 13 years prior. Yeah, that's how long and how slow that process is. But we are very excited about things like the Credit Reference Bureau and credit information sharing because I think those are the things that will uh, enhance uh, the, the, the entire industry. So we had a very good um, good performance around all around. Excited about it. Great team. Great client base. Lots of focus in a very challenging year, if I was to summarize. Well, first of all, to be clear, I don't think that the private sector reduction in lending is only because of interest rate capping. There is clear evidence that the decline was already starting long yes. before, actually from the very beginning of the year. So there was a general slowdown in the economy in certain sectors, not across. Uh, and, and, and very recently, we had a meeting with the central bank governor and the banks when they did their most recent MPS the MPC meeting, sorry, and um, they, they gave us very, very good data this time, I must say. And the data seemed to indicate that there are certain sectors that have declined more than most. Manufacturing was one, 
And I think they mentioned something about, you know, the big uh, manufacturing um, entity, TSS in Mombasa, that, that, had a, yes, yeah. that had a significant impact on credit in the banking industry. Real estate was the other, and, and the construction industry. Uh, retail. Retail, because you know very well that uh, there are some very big retailers, supermarkets, that have actually created a credit crunch into the system. And that has uh, challenged some of our suppliers who haven't been paid for months on end. Uh, I think government, yes. with some of its contractors, had also delayed quite a bit of payment. So all these things add up. And then, of course, with the three bank failures the year prior, had already built some kind of confidence, crisis confidence in the system. Then the interest rate cap just, you know, further added to. So I think multiple things are happening. And remember, Kenya is not an island. There's challenges all over the world. Yes, we are still having a great growth trajectory, especially more because of what we have chosen to invest in recently. The infrastructure development, etc., have been things where they kind of build hope into the future. It shows that these things will be uh, income generated in the future. If you think of the rail, you think of the roads, you know, route to market and those kind of things. Uh, at least the, 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 the benefit hasn't just gone to increasing public sector salaries. So it, it, it is overall uh, a good story in a bad environment. Well, I think what we try to do when it comes to digital banking is, you know, we have to make sure we don't rest on our laurels. Remember that when we introduced digitization in this, in this market 25 years ago, we were the only players. But if you look around, all banks have some kind of digital strategy. They have some online system. They have some mobile capability. So the most important thing for us is to continue to stay relevant to our clients. And how do we do that? We make sure that our clients are fully engaged in, in what we do. And they're using what we, what we provide for them, right? As I mentioned, you know, we have, um, we are extremely, Digital. I think I've told you this before. Our global CEO once said, "We are a we are digital. We are a technology, a company technology company with a banking license. <laughs> yeah. With a banking license." He says that in jest, but you know, when I when I look around, I I, I must agree with him. We have less than two hundred employees, but what we churn out here is 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 pretty phenomenal, and the team are very excited about that. Um, everything is digitized. Our clients are completely onboarded digitally. When we open an account for a client, and it starts at the very beginning, we don't consider their account open until they are fully onboarded digitally. That's when we say, okay, the account is now live and kicking, right? So that means that even our electronic banking team cannot let go of that client. They, we have to hold your hand until you know, you're know you all able to operate on your phone or your pad. And the way the system works is that you should be able to operate on those if anywhere in the world you are. Because remember, a lot of our clients, 50% of our clients are multinationals. We don't expect them to be sitting at their desks and then they're using their, their, their PCs and then we say, oh, digital. No, they should be able to be traveling to Tanzania and continue to operate their bank account. Yeah, whether it's through mobile, through iPad, through, through the computer, but it has to be digital. That's the only winning proposition for city in Kenya and city around the world. We are constantly innovating uh, to serve the clients that we deal with. Um, efficiency is a priority. For us, we see growth coming from two areas, actually three. We see growth coming from the local corporates, and we have a very clear strategy to win a lot more local corporates. Because truth is, for every one big multinational, there are three or four big local corporates competing with. Yeah, and I, I have said that to you before. So local corporations, especially in the FMCG space, we continue to believe in, and we would like to support a lot more. 
and that's a great business. Uh, the second space we see a lot of opportunity and growth is in the digitization. This market, I don't know how many of your readers or viewers fully understand just how um, significant Kenya is as a capital for mobile payments and digitization in the world. In the world. We are a serious player. And the fact that we even have a government who's a serious participant is amazing. And the fact that we are giving little tablets to little standard, our standard one children all over the country to start to engage with systems across and uniformly, it's going to transform this country in my view. It, it speaks to our, our potential on the digital uh, uh, stadium. Actually, we're on the stage and we're dancing on that stage. The third thing is I see growth in multinationals, foreign direct investment. Actually, it's surprising, you know, People question whether there's real foreign direct investment in this country. I can answer that just by looking at our account, our accounts in our bank. The number of multinationals that have been flying into this country and opening accounts with us, and we get those accounts even sometimes before they land, has been significant over the past five years. We have not seen this amount of growth in multinationals than we have in the past 20, collectively, yeah. They may appear silent, but it's happening, it's happening. I mean, just think about it, Sutherland. Sutherland, just last month, across East Africa was bought out by Kansai, big Japanese paint company, or Asian paint company. Those are multinationals putting a stake in the ground. You have others from, uh, um, Norway, I think, Jotun. People are coming in. They may appear to be quiet, but they're coming in. People like Oracle and Google were not here 10 years ago, if you think about it. Uh, the GEs and a lot of the American organizations have been coming in quite significantly. Europeans, investors, putting up um, the world's largest wind farm in Kenya. The world's largest wind farm in Turkana. I mean, those stories are not perhaps getting a significant audience, but they should. This is the largest private sector led investment in the country's history. You know, we are all focused on the SGI, $3.2 billion or whatever it is, 327 billion shillings, but that's government led. That's a government to government. What's happening in Lake Turkana is, you know, a billion dollar investment by private sector. That's shocking and that's amazing and that's a real testament of faith. So we see a lot of these things. We have conversations with our regulators, with some of these clients. You know, our regulators say, you know, bring these clients. We want to understand what they're doing. And we say, yeah, here. Here they are. Let's, let's talk about what they're trying to do. And the question is usually asked, you know, how come? And they say, because the environment. The, the business environment, not the political, <laughs> not the newspapers, the headlines don't reflect what is really happening. But I can tell you as a living testament, we see it. We see it. And that's what you're saying now. Yes.